Yo, it's Guido coming after the Tactics Talk. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for tuning in this episode of World of Tanks. And we've got Raxter. Raxter54 is back in his Scorpion. The American, the baby Scorpion, the little Scorpion. Not the German Scorpion G, but the Tier 7 American Scorpion. Loaded into Redshire on the North Spawn, and he's going to head over here towards the East. Towards the Northeast. I've had a lot of videos lately with guys trying to get better somewhere in the high 40% win rate to low 50s and definitely seeing a bit of a theme with that and it's been interesting as I have learned as I've looked at these videos and watched these guys play on just exactly what it is that is the difference between say a 49-48% player and maybe a 53-54% and higher player and I, I think it's pretty obvious people talk about it a lot but Often I think we have difficulty visualizing exactly what it means. And what it is that is said is reaction, right? Reacting to the flow, going to the right places, flexing, right? The meta flex, all of those words that we use that are often undefined and never really given examples of. So I've been trying to do that lately. It's been very interesting. So we got Raxter. He's in his ultimate, ultimate sniper TD, right? He's in the... M56, this is not a tank you want to go up to the front with, unless you have to, okay? We're going to talk about the times when you might want to do that, but right now that is not the time. And he has this great little spot here, all right? I have been hit from this spot multiple times. He knocked that tree down. I'm assuming that gives him some camo. I don't know how far up the tree that goes, but in any event, he's far enough back with enough trees and stuff in his way. He's not being spotted. So Raxter knows a spot. And I think we all do that, right? We all have spots that we know are good. In the case of this spot, it relies completely on the other team pushing into you. If his team had enough tanks there to push, it's not a great spot because his team's pushing into them and the enemy's corresponding spot, which is back here, is working for them. But right now, he's got a good setup that's a bad setup. He doesn't have enough tanks here, really, to push. He can't help and push because he's a little tiny scorpion with no armor. But the enemy team does, and they're able to push into his gun. It's kind of a strange thing. This is an example of what I like to talk about relying on the enemy team being bad. But this is the situation he has. It's the tank he has, and it's not a bad spot. So let's go ahead and watch Raxter work through this spot. Because right now, he's doing a really nice job here. Take a little shot onto the 34100. Dude looks to be stuck. We're trying to reload. Nope, dies anyway. And we've gone to heat early, so we're using the heat up. KV-3 takes a hit. We're just gonna about to be out of heat. I'm gonna try to take a shot into that guy. I think I would have gone for the KV-3 there, Raxter, instead of switch over to the 703. Just had a better shot at that guy. KV-3's bumming. Are we gonna get into him before he fixes? There we go, another shot. Now he's tracked. We've got 1,400 damage. Another shot into the KV-3. And then we switch targets. I think I would have stuck with that KV-3. Ooh, yeah. So I'd have stuck with that KV-3. And I'd have shot into that same spot even though he went dark. But that's all right. We look for this dude. Get a chunk out of the 703. Like I always say here, Raxter, one thing you want to do is zoom out and see what's going on. Did you have another shot? Yeah, you may, may have had a better shot on these guys over here. But we're messing around with him. I think he's up behind a rock. He's tucked up behind a rock right there. So we switch back over, looking for shots here. Maybe a little hasty. I think you had a better shot if you'd have aimed it a little bit better. Tiger P was probably your better bet. He's got worse armor, but there you go. You put a chunk into him and he dies. So <laughs> someone ammo, ammo rack that guy. I think a little zoom in here would have helped you as well. But nice job. Just dropping the damage. 2,400. So our spot is working. The enemy is pushing into us, giving us all kinds of shots. And for the moment, no problem doing this because... Shots are being made available. Now here's something. I want everyone to take a look at the mini-map. Because it takes Raxter a long time to notice this. Just look at the mini-map. Just internalize that for a minute. Because the worst thing that a TD sitting in this little spot can have happen to them is get spotted. Holy cow. It took you a long time to see that guy. In fact, he was lit a little while earlier. You could have started punishing that guy much earlier. Those bushes, though, are keeping him from seeing you. And he's bumming. I've also been hit by TD sitting in this spot doing what the 44100 is doing. He's trying to relieve the pressure on his guys up there and give them a little bit of an opportunity to push in on what was, at least for a while, a weaker force. But it looks like enough guys have flexed, meta-flexed over here. And all of a sudden, Raxer's at 3411. All right. 
This is a subject we talked about a lot, and I started with this. What is the difference between a 49% player and a 53 or higher percent player? It is almost entirely this part of the battle and forward. Okay, This part, the mid to late tier decision making, is almost the entirety of the difference between those two players. So this guy is pretty well hurt. We're kind of looking at his... We're kind of looking at his... Um, turret but we actually had a shot at his lower plate i think if you'd have fine-tuned that shot you definitely had an opportunity there and we're gonna have a couple more missed opportunities like that he's kind of backing out we're just sort of accepting that and he gets around okay that's fine take a look at this guy nope nothing going on there take a look at this guy just shoot that Ooh, a little late a little late went into the ground anyway there we go this is where we're kind of missing our our heat and you did a nice job taking on heavily armored guys with the heat earlier there's a bat chat moving through the middle. We do need to watch him. We don't want him to come back here and light us. Our 122 doesn't have a lot of hit points. The Oni just died. We accept a shot into the front of the T60, T60, what is it? T26 E4, we, when we, he gave us sides. Notice the the angle of that guy, the profile of it. That's one thing you got to start watching when you highlight him. What is he doing? Well, he was backing up and turning, you think about this, backing up and turning to the right, wasn't he? Which means he's going to give you that that right side of his tank. If you'd have just shifted that shot to there, you'd have, you'd have went right into him. And I think you realized it there as you were kind of highlighting his side, probably wishing you'd have taken that shot a little bit later. Even 90s going after the bat chat. Once the bat chat's down, that's good juju. There's three guys there, so we really can't quite push out right now. And they're still coming around the corner giving us shots. This dude's trying to come around. There, there's the KV-3. Let's make sure he goes away. Oh, I have no idea how you hit that. It looked like you were, I think it went high because it looked like you were actually aiming at a carcass that was right there. Boom, that's important. And now we've got the super coming in. And we're going to shoot at, we're going to end up shooting at the hole. The correct shot in this case, Raxter, is right there. Just shift up into the side of that turret where you got the green going on. This is going to be very difficult to pin around here, right here. He's giving you some of that side turret. You definitely had an opportunity to take that guy out, or at least put a chunk of damage. I wouldn't have killed him because he's got 600 something hit points. Another shot into the Tiger P. Another opportunity here to kill, or at least take another shot off of the super. And I think you'd have killed him based on if you had you shot him the other time. There you go. You finally start to see the turret, but unfortunately now he's coming on at you. Finally get it into the side of the turret. Nice job there. Look for the side of the hole. Ooh, ooh, what's going on? There we go. All right. Tiger P is near dead. 703 version 2 is near dead. This well has about dried up. This well has about dried up. And we're just going to sit here for a bit. And again, we're now we're on to the hope that they actually come towards me. When, what I would have done is move down forward into those bushes down there. Just go straight forward and see if you can find one of them. I would be thinking that maybe they're not going to push anymore. You absolutely hammered them. 4,459 damage sitting back here. Weren't spotted even once. I feel like they're not going to be very interested in pushing at you. So I'd have gone forward into those bushes. Take a quick look and see if they are messing around. As the EVA 90 goes in, here comes your scouting friend. Go support him, right? This is that point where I've been talking about that 48, 49 percenter trying to become a 52, 53 percenter. This is the part of the game where that starts to happen, where you can influence late games and make wins happen. Hey, look, the version two ran away. Go. You got. You go now. The, the scout just gave you the information that you needed. That's part of the reading. That's part of the flexing, part of the maneuvering, part of the meta flex part of the repositioning, whatever bloody word you want to use right there. That guy just gave you the essay that you needed. And it's very frustrating when you're in a scout like that and people are kind of hanging back when you're getting the essay that they need. It's time to start track tracking down their tanks that are getting out into the open. And finally we do this. So that's fantastic. I just think it was a bit late. I think you would have caught a couple of those guys out if you'd have moved in. The next thing then is once you start to do it, is you got to think about your approach. And I do not like the idea of going to the left of these rocks. I absolutely would have gone to the right. 
because that protects me a lot more. There's the Tiger P. Holy cow, the Tiger P is not even close to a threat. Let's get in there. See if we can find this 703. Your scout just found him. Get in there and help him. Right? You want to get in there and help the scout. I don't like this. I don't like that you went down low. The better approach was to come up over high and immediately put your gun on this guy and shoot him. We kind of come in here low and then we flub the shot. This guy's looking at us. That's a bit of a bummer. We just totally missed, unfortunately. The 122 gets a shot on us. The good news is the ELC is raging in and he's able to take that guy out. So you tag team him, which is exactly what you wanted to do right there. I would not have gone to the right and started going up the hill and slowing down. I would have cut left and went right into those buildings right there and cover up from these dudes who are probably up on this hill. Okay, go right into those buildings and cover up because you're just out in the open begging one of these dudes to shoot you over there. So we go back around here. We kind of stop. I, I don't know if you still thought the 122 was alive. Uh, unknown right there. It looked like you were still trying to fight him. So you may have realized late that he was still, or that he was dead. Tiger P is down in the swamp. That's going to kill his mobility. Jump all over that guy. Unfortunately, this is not a very heavy tank. So it does slow down when it hits rock walls and stuff. It takes a while to get through it. Now the 12T, all right? This is this is another good example, and it's something that I see the, the lower win rate guys do quite a bit, is not being absolutely aggressive right when it needs to be done, okay? Being carefully aggressive is important, but your A44 is getting jumped by a 12T. A 12T is going to machine gun this guy. In order to preserve the A44, you've got to get in there and try to make something happen. And what we do is we kind of, oh, there's a building. Well, yeah, dude, you keep going. Uncover the 12T so you can get shots on him. You've got to get in there. There you go. We finally get there. There's a shot. And the 12T by all rights should be dead. And there was no reason to back up. No, There was no reason. The guy is clipped out on the A44. It has a relatively fast clip reload. But you had to get in there and kill this guy. And be quite honest, we get really lucky on this shot. So you did it. The idea was there. It's just the execution was slow and a little bit incorrect. But nice job overall. You ended up doing it and you did push. So that's the good news, right? The good news here is that you did push, okay, eventually. You did work with your scout, eventually. You did get in there and save the A44, eventually. So see how it's always eventually? Any one of those executed a little bit faster and a little bit better preserves a few more hit points and speeds up the game just a little bit. And it's interesting because it is important to, when I say speed up the game, it is important to kill the enemy guys faster if you can because that takes a gun off the board and creates more opportunities for the rest of your team earlier. So they're not pinned down by that guy or they're not worried about that guy. You don't want to do it at the expense of all your hit points. So husbanding hit points is important. But I think in all three of those cases, you could have done those faster, a little bit more correctly, removed the enemy guns off the, off the map a little bit faster and given the rest of your team more opportunities. See how all of that, it's all synergistic, it all works together. Obviously you don't YOLO and say, Guido said, take a gun off the game, you know, get rid of all your hit points just to get the one guy. That's not the point. You need to do it smart and you were, it's just, I think the timing is a little bit off and that really guys at the, at the end of the day, that's exactly why people are 55% or more. It's varying abilities to read that and react faster than other people. That's, it really is just that simple. It is that simple, but it is very difficult to execute. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate your support of the channel. If you're looking for other ways to do so, lots of ways down in the description, and we will see you.